In this video, we are going to be doing an analysis of what is essentially an 85-ton miracle. This particular chassis was expected to be little more than a design meant for training simulators, but would emerge as a hard-hitting, battle-line assault mech with a number of great capabilities. Large, foreboding, surprisingly maneuverable, and reasonably armored, today we are going to talk about the mid-range hitter that went from the minors to the big leagues. Blankenberg Technologies, Crockett, or Katana. An assault mech weighing in at 85 tons, the Crockett, as it was originally named, was meant to be a training mech for SLDF pilots expecting to be put into physically large mechs. Conceptualized as an almost oversized machine for its weight with reasonable equipment across a broad range of systems and with jump capabilities in order to make pilots more accustomed to using large battle mechs such as the Highlander. It just turned out that it performed its task so well and became such a favorite among pilots who used it in their training regime and simulators that many military units would start to take on the Crockett in their assault formations due to these fantastic properties, yielding an even greater return for Blankenberg Technologies. Though this transition did discover several issues with the Crockett as well, such as having faulty life support systems, which would be supposedly corrected afterwards, but unfortunately only after several pilots had the misfortune of discovering it and losing their lives. It was originally built in 2735, and it would only have a few decades in the League and House services before Calamity struck. With the fall of the Star League, the Houses would press all of their Crockett's into frontline services in short order, forcing the mechs to pay a heavy price for their own greed. There are actually some conflicting materials on the fate of the Crockett after this time. In some resources, such as 3050 Upgrade, a book by FanPro, it would describe the Crockett surviving in few numbers, and all remaining examples being downgrades, as well as being patched together from cadavers and replacement parts. Though Technical Readout Revised 3025, a book by FASA, would describe something a bit different in regards to the production of the downgraded units. Blankenberg, which if I'm not mistaken was its own entity at the time rather than a subsidiary of Independence Weaponry, which it would eventually become, would produce these downgrades in some numbers due to their popularity, and because some of their facilities still persist to build these outside of Terra, even in a primitive format, so much so that they often had difficulty keeping up with demand for these new downgrades to walk off the assembly line. And it was specifically noted that profits were put towards expanding production consistently to allow more CRK-5003-0s dash dash to walk off the assembly line. Perhaps the reality lies somewhere in between these two descriptions, but it is not altogether easy to know. Some may argue the latter canon takes priority, but I don't always feel this position works however, especially in cases such as this. This nonetheless doesn't change the fact that in its original form the Crockett would only survive in the hands of Comstar who would use its more sophisticated variants in the Comguard, and would eventually confront the clans and other forces with this ancient, but fantastic design. The Katana, the Draconis Combine-specific replacement, would appear due to a deal between the Combine and Comstar. This was not due to Independence Weaponry getting their hands in the design through the settlement, and was a result of their lease of a storage facility from Blankenberg, with the consent of both the Combine and Comstar that would lead to them eventually finding parts that would allow them to reverse engineer its production and therefore create their own variant. Thus, the Katana was born. The first and most prominent variant of the Crockett was the original developed by Blankenberg for widespread distribution, namely the CRK-5003-1. Powered by a 13-ton Strand 255D Fusion Standard Engine, the Crockett can achieve a maximum speed of 54 km per hour, or 5 movement points in the tabletop game. This is not particularly quick even for its weight, 
given that it has piers like the Battlemaster moving at 64 kilometers per hour. But it is not unexpected in terms of an 85 ton assault mech with its more dedicated heavy fighting role. It is famous as well for being an assault mech of its size installing jump jets, giving it the ability to leap 90 meters or three movement points in the tabletop game. This allows the Crockett to circumvent or bypass terrain features, which may be obstacles for its limited movement, or even to reposition itself to evade a negative situation. Despite this maneuvering bonus, the Crockett is slower than medium or heavy formations on a strategic level, and thus will appear as a part of typically dedicated assault formations or breakthrough units, which makes sense given that it is 85 tons. In regards to its cooling system, the 5003 displays the advantage of the era it was made, benefiting from the height of the Star League's technology in the form of double heat sinks. It comes equipped with 15 of these heat sinks, giving it a maximum total of 30 heat reduction capacity. This gives this assault mech options when choosing the weapon systems that it's going to employ against its targets of choice. And the CRK 5003-1 is most well served in the realm of sophisticated offensive systems. For its long range tools, it has a pair of Blankenberg 25 large lasers, or ER large lasers, with one mounted in each arm. These allow the Crockett to scorch armor off targets in standoff, direct fire strikes, or to soften up their opposition before making a direct, closer range engagement. To back these up, and to work in tandem with these weapons more up close as well, the CRK has the benefit of possessing a Blankenberg LB-10X autocannon, providing a horrific and powerful long-range shotgun blast that can send scattering shots into targets, allowing the 5003 to crit seek or find damage or exposed armor plating. As the engagement gets into closer range, at under 270 meters, a pair of Holly 6 SRM launchers are added to this orchestra of death, giving it even more crit-seeking punching power, though these will struggle to find use at the same time as both large lasers without potentially driving the Crockett into a situation where it is overheating, despite its double heat sinks. They, however, will work just fine with one of those lasers firing and all the other weapons on board, to finish off this weapons array, two Dodd small lasers are added for the extra layer of close range damage within 90 meters. What all of these systems mean is that the Crockett has layers of fire it can use to envelop its opponents, hitting them from far out to in close until it just overwhelms them through shredding fire. Stripping away armor at a distance while looking for weaknesses with potentially 22 hits from three weapon systems in close. Make no mistake, the Crockett's ability to kill on the battlefield is substantial, and it is just as frightening as many of its well-known peers. For protection, this Bayamoth is not underserved by any means, coming with a more than effective 16.5 tons of standard armor, making it more protected than both the Stalker and the Battlemaster. This would make sense too, given that it was originally meant for training. These mechs will end up seeing abuse more often than one may think, and the need for armor across its chassis is more than reasonable as a result. Able to traverse dangerous terrain, obliterate targets while mostly keeping cool, and able to stay alive in the face of severe enemy fire, the Crockett was one of the stars of the show of the mechs in the 2750 technical readout, even if many don't find themselves as compelled to take this relatively rare mech to the field. It's very much more than just a training mech, to be sure. But the CRK series didn't end with the original and it would survive into the Succession Wars, even if in a diminished state. It would also inspire the Combine to make their own version of the mech, which is in essence the same machine, namely the Katana. During the Succession Wars, the CRK 5003-0 would appear as the established downgrade refit kit for repair, maintenance, and production of the Crockett. And it's a relatively dangerous battlefield combatant, if a flawed one. Unlike its progenitor, it does suffer heat issues as related to its lack of double heat sinks, 
but it still performs well at range, despite mild heat overflows and the need to cycle its weapon systems much more thoroughly. Outside of its heat sinks, the primary changes are very simple. ER large lasers become large lasers. The LBX-10 becomes a traditional AC-10 autocannon. It largely operates in the same way, but in a more restricted capacity. The Zero is by no means a slouch for the era that it is fighting in. It's just one that needs to be more carefully managed, as to not get itself into too hot of water in regards to firing its weapons. This monster among mechs can trade shots with some of the best and come out on top. For its time in the Star League, a Royal variant would eventually see itself produced for the most prominent units in the SLDF. This would be designated the CRK-5003-1B. It changes the weapon systems, mostly. The SRM launchers are removed and replaced with medium lasers and medium pulse lasers, while the LBX autocannon is replaced with a mighty Gauss rifle. This would, funnily enough, see more time in use by the exiled SLDF soldiers, otherwise known as the clans, in their battles and trials, than it would in the SLDF proper. Come the clan invasion, the original SLDF variant would see itself in service to Comstar, battling for their interests as a Comguard asset, as well as fighting in the vicious battle of Tukiid. The most notable model from this time, though, is not the Crockett itself, but the Combine's Katana, the CRK-5003-2. This mech is an upgrade of the CRK-5003-0, and solves some of its ancestors' heat issues by crippling the mech's protection. Reinstalling the LBX autocannon, it is otherwise a CRK-0, but with 20 standard heat sinks, gaining these heat sinks from removing 4 tons of its armor, making its protection significantly less. With its lower mobility as well, this means the katana takes on large volumes of fire and is just less protected. While its offensive capabilities are respectable, the two just simply lacks protection. This would also be an assault mech that was deployed on the front lines of the clan invasion, and I can't help but feel some sympathy for its pilots, as they honestly might have been better off just being left in a Crockett Zero downgrade in some respects instead. But the line of the Katana has the latest generation variant available to the Crockett series in the form of the 5006-1. Twin light PPCs are used instead of ER large lasers and are backed up by twin ER medium lasers of inner sphere quality in the same locations. Its SRM systems are upgraded to their streak format and the LBX autocannon is shifted into a Gauss rifle. Explosive components on board are shielded by new Case 2 systems to prevent damage to the machine as well. While all of these are impressive, the 5006 unfortunately has the same armor as the 5003-2, as it very much has the ability to damage targets it needs to destroy. But it is to say that there is a great risk to the men and women who pilot this mech and that they might not see the other side of a battlefield against a dedicated enemy intent on destroying their vehicle. The Katana and the Crockett have had a long-standing impact on the Inner Sphere, despite their relatively late arrival during the Star League. This mech was almost a footnote in the history of the League, had it not been for the collapse of the organization and the need to press these machines into direct combat service, which is something they not only did competently, but excelled at. It's also interesting to add that the Black Watch, a new battle mech for the second iteration of the Star League, used the Crockett as the inspiration for their chassis. In the history of war in the Inner Sphere, the Crockett has proved the idea that sometimes people aren't meant to play a certain role, but are thrust upon them in times of need, and it's sink or swim. The Crockett swam. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. There's new content on this channel very frequently and I appreciate your support. Also a huge thank you to all the YouTube members who support this channel, as these videos are only possible because of viewers like you. With that, I will catch everyone in the comments section below.